My name is Justine, I'm a labor and delivery nurse, and today we have a patient in here just been told that she's going to have a preterm baby tomorrow, and unfortunately she also has some inverted nipples. So I'm going to head in there now and deal with this breastfeeding challenge. I'm going to use a situated clinical decision making framework to work my th way through this breastfeeding challenge. So let's go on in and meet Jill. Hi Jill. Hi. My name is Justine. I'll be your nurse for right now. I know you're going for a session tomorrow for a preterm baby, baby 36 weeks old, and you also have, unfortunately, inverted nipples. Yes. Do you have any questions for me? How do I know I have inverted nipples? Well, Jill, thanks for the question. The definition of inverted nipple is much like this one, but it is literally an indent because of breast tissue being a bit tight there, sucking the nipple back. So if you took your hand onto your breast and pulled back from your areola, and it was still inverted, you have true inverted nipples. You can get them either born with them, or you can get from surgical, or disease, or trauma. Do you have any more questions about inverted nipples? Well, can I breastfeed my baby with inverted nipples? Definitely. Um, I just want to also mention there's two types of inverted nipples. Retractable, which is the most common, where the nipple can evert with sucking. So you possibly could still breastfeed the baby very successfully, because we can help you with that. And also there's the uh, true inversion where even if it's compressed, it won't come out. So to answer your questions, they don't always present a problem breastfeeding, so you could. And there are ways that we will help you. Feeding your baby early and often and effectively is our key to success. Okay. Also, over time, your nipples could become elongated and that will lessen the inversion. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what makes my preterm baby different from a term baby in terms of being able to breastfeed? Well, um, there could be no problem with your baby's ability to feed at 36 weeks. However, in lots of preterm babies that's born before 37 weeks, there are difficulties with them coordinating the latch, the suck, and the breathing, which gets in the way of effective feeding. Babies at 34 to 38 weeks may be less efficient feeders due to the less muscle tone in their body and jaw may have a delayed suck-swallow breathing pattern, may have inconsistent sleeping patterns which will make them all tuckered out and tired, and may have a less efficient feeding pattern of shorter periods of time which could result in less milk and therefore less milk transfer. Also, if your baby needs uh, medical care, there may be a separation of bedside nursing as your baby is cared for in our, our NICU, and this could interfere with natural feeding habits. We will watch in your baby, your preterm, we'll watch for jaundice, weight loss, more than 10% gets us a bit worried, sleepiness, adequate voids, and bowel movements. Okay. How will you be able to tell if I'm having breastfeeding challenges? So this leads me to the cues section of the, the situation framework. First of all, I'm going to look at the mother. I would assess the mother's breast with permission, of course and ask her to pull back the areola with the thumb and the finger and pull it forward and see when you pull back if it's a true inversion. Um, I would, then I would look to see how the mother's doing, if you're sleep deprived because you're up all night trying to feed a baby. The mother's milk may not be coming in due to lack of stimulation of the breast. The mother may be emotional. And the family support, I also look at the family members and make sure they're well supported as they're struggling. Okay. And then secondly, then I would go to look at my baby. My second patient is the baby. For the baby, I'm looking at sleepy and difficult to rouse. The baby may be losing weight, maybe hypoglycemic, that means his blood sugars are low. Maybe developing jaundice, may not be pooping and peeing enough. Um, inability to suck effectively due to low tone, maybe uncoordinated with that suck. And the baby may be frantic at the breast as he wants to feed and can't. Basically, both people are very stressed. Oh my. Don't worry, we're here for you. <laughs> After you gather your knowledge from sources and assess the cues, what do you do with that? So this is where our judgment comes into place, and it's you and I together as a team to get through this. I would conclude that we do have a breastfeeding challenge, which requires my attention. I would uh, look at the nature of your nipples with the nature of the preterm baby and come up with a plan. I would be worried about the baby's nutritional intake and thriving capabilities. I'd also be worried about the relationship between the mother and the baby as the frustration rises and stressors add up. I would also be worried about your partner as he or she may feel helpless in this situation. Okay. Who else is going to help you? Well, I could consult uh, a lactation consultant. I will also consult your doctor. 
and also my colleagues and get help here as a team to see what's the best plan for you. We also have a protocol binder based on research articles that help with breastfeeding challenges. Mm, sounds good. What are we going to focus on and what are our priorities? Well, first of all, we're going to help you to get the nipple out, so hopefully baby has something to latch onto. Secondly, we're going to help feed your baby. And thirdly, we're going to help you on this emotional journal, because I feel like journey, I feel like a mental piece is making sure that mom is happy and baby's happy. Sounds stressful. How will we know that your treatments have worked? Well, what we do first, we deal with mental health. So first we go outside, I tell you to get a tea, take a breath some fresh air, and come back to start our journey to deal with your breastfeeding challenge. I will counsel you through this perfect star of emotion and assure you that it's quite normal to be going through this and alleviate all the blame game that comes with a new mother having difficulties feeding their baby. Secondly, I'm going to help you pull the nipple out for your baby. We're going to initiate breastfeeding as soon as possible. Baby's going to be skin to skin on you straight away and get that first baby, get that first feet. Your breast should be the first thing in your baby's mouth. We're going to try and avoid artificial teats for now and we will put the baby skin to skin to stimulate the breast, nipples, and milk production. We'll start hand expressing to encourage stimulation of nipple and production of colostrum. So I'll get you to pull back and roll it right off. This one obviously popped out easy, it's not a true inversion, but you can see how that would be hand expressing. And when you hand express milk, we collect it in a spoon or potentially in a little cup, and then we can feed that to your baby if baby's not able to suck. We'll get you using a breast pump to help stimulate and pull the nipple out. And we will make sure you're using an effective hold for baby's success. So the football hold often works well for these inversion nipples. And we may put a cold compress on your nipple to draw it out. And finally, we will fashion the breast into a sandwich, sandwich so baby has something to grasp onto. And we'll help you with all of that too. Thirdly, we're going to feed the baby. We can use a variety of methods. First of all, it's going to be skin to skin, and we need to remember that we need to have patience. We'll start by hand expressing and breast pumping right away. And then once we collect, we can pull it up in a syringe, and we can give it to baby through this little straw here. So your express breast milk will be in here after you're pumping. And then we can put it in here and give that to baby alongside your nipple or the sandwich of the skin that we've made to be your nipple. Right. And then I've already discussed how we could do it with the spoon and the straw. There's another tool that we sometimes use, Jill, called the nipple shield, and this goes on over your nipple, and it goes on like that, and then it gives something baby to, to hold on to. This is the nipple shield that can be successful. It's a soft teat for the baby to latch on to. We may help baby the SNS that we discussed, and we may feed at four hour intervals, because we're aware the preterm needs sleep to recover and lots of rest, so we may, if we get good feeding pattern, we may stretch out our intervals. And uh, more severely perhaps, we may insert an ND tube into your baby's nose, like a big straw that goes down baby's nose into baby's tummy, and that will give your baby some EBM that way, express breast milk. Basically, we're giving the baby time to mature and develop coordination, and we're going to assess daily and every shift to see how you and baby are doing with them. But you asked, how do I evaluate my outcomes? This is the final step for my, for my plan. Uh, so you will be happier. Your baby's doing well at the best, and you'll feel more confident and more settled. You'll be able to produce some sort of nipple area for your child to latch onto, whether it be a molded version of your nipple, breast shield, or the nipple itself. And you'll be able to feed your baby in some fashion. Signs of a well baby fed are settles well, wakes to feet, has a deep latch, effective milk transfer, alert, not jaundiced, good poops and pees, gains weight, and empties mother's breasts almost, and your milk should start to come in. So in conclusion, Jill, I have gone over a breastfeeding challenge of inverted nipples and with your preterm baby that you're going to have tomorrow. I taught you how to get through this with help of the nursing care that you have here. I assess both the inverted nipples and the preterm baby. I observe potential cues for challenges. I use my judgment to ascertain what the problems were and who to consult with. I then proceeded to set three priorities. One, extract the nipple. Two, assist the preterm to feed. And three, attend to the emotional needs of the mother. After which, I told you how I would evaluate, which is a happy mom and a thriving baby.
Thank you very much. You're welcome. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm just going to go do some charting. Okay. Thank you.